We previously introduced the defin- we previously introduced the formal definition of the limit of a function. Link in the description to that lesson. Now, you probably assume that at a point, if a function has a limit, it has only one. The limit of a function is unique. Indeed, that is true, and that's what we'll be proving today. Here is the definition of the limit of a function. If you need to give it a look, that will be a crucial part of our proof. The idea is we can assume our function has two limits at one point. Then, by definition of the limit of a function, the function will need to get arbitrarily close to both of those limits, which means those limits will have to be arbitrarily close to each other, and thus they'll have to be equal. So let's get into the proof. Let f be a function from a subset a of the real numbers to the real numbers, and c is a limit point of a. So we can consider what happens to the function as x gets arbitrarily close to c. So let's say that the limit of our function as x approaches c equals l1, and the limit of the function as x approaches c equals L2. Perhaps L1 and L2 are the same, perhaps not. Our objective, of course, is to prove that they are the same because the limit of a function is unique, so these limits must be the same. Now, to show they are the same, we're going to prove that the distance between them, the absolute value of L1 minus L2, is less than epsilon for all epsilon greater than zero. If the distance between these limits is less than every positive number, well, the only possibility is that there is no distance between them. They are equal. To that end, we'll let epsilon be greater than zero. Now I'm just going to skip a little bit ahead in the proof so that we can see where these parts are going to come from. Because the idea is that we're trying to make this distance arbitrarily small, the distance between L1 and L2. Now we can make x as close to c as we want. c is a limit point. so the absolute value of x minus c will be less than delta, and it will be up to us to pick a delta that makes the proof work. But what delta is going to make the proof work? Well, if we consider this distance, we would like to get the function f of x involved in this expression because we can control how far f of x is from L1, since it's a limit, and we can control how far f of x is from L2. So there's not much we can do with this unless we get f of x involved. So we subtract f of x and add f of x. In this way, we're just adding zero, so it's perfectly legitimate. This is equal to this. But now we have a sum. We have L1 minus f of x plus f of x minus L2. So we can apply the triangle inequality theorem and split this across the sum. This uh, absolute value of a sum must be less than or equal to the sum of the absolute values. And that application of the triangle inequality theorem to split this sum up into a sum of absolute values is critical because we can control both of these expressions. This is the distance between f of x and L1. It's in an absolute value bar, so it doesn't matter what order we do the subtraction. We can make that as small as we want. L1 is the limit of f of x, so we could make that arbitrarily small. Same thing goes for this distance between f of x and L2. So how small should we make them? Well, of course, we want this to be less than epsilon. That's the goal here. We're showing the distance between the limits is less than any positive number. So we just need both of these things to be less than epsilon over 2. If this is less than epsilon over 2, and this is less than epsilon over 2, then there we go. We're done the proof. So how do we make that happen? Well, it comes back to f of x converging to a limit of L1 and f of x converging to a limit of L2, as x approaches c, of course. Applying the definition of the limit of a function, we know that there must exist this positive number delta 1, so that as long as x is within in delta 1 of the limit point c, our function is within epsilon over 2 of the limit L1. That's by definition of a limit, this number must exist. Similarly, over here, there must exist a positive number, delta 2, greater than 0, so that for all x that are within delta 2 of the limit point c, f of x will be within epsilon over 2 of its limit L2. 
But then how do we ensure that both of these conditions apply, that the distance between f of x and l1 and the distance between f of x and l2 are both less than epsilon over 2? Well, we just got to make sure that x is sufficiently close to c. It needs to be within delta 1 of c, and it needs to be within delta 2 of c. So we'll just set delta to be the minimum of delta 1 and delta 2. And then if x is within delta of c, both of these inequalities apply, and our proof is solid. Now we've shown that these two limits of f of x as x approaches c have a distance between each other that's less than any positive number. And of course, distance can't be negative, so the distance between them must be zero. And so L1 is equal to L2, which means the limit of a function at a point is unique. You can't possibly have two limits at the same point that are distinct. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you find these real analysis videos helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description, it's a huge help. Thanks for watching.